there, John Hay. Incredible, actually, to tour the muddy, tense trenches on the front lines of eastern Ukraine with the president of the country. We spoke at length about the state of his troops, about what Russia might be up to with its build-up of forces across the border, and, of course, what the United States needs to do to try and help bring an end to this conflict. To the front lines in eastern Ukraine and a simmering conflict with Russian-backed rebels, once again the focus of US concern. As tensions with Russia ratchet higher, CNN has gained this unprecedented access to the Ukrainian president on a carefully planned troop visit, flying with him fast and low to avoid ground fire. It's been a long time now. It's been seven years, this war. Yes, during seven years. And yes. how are the soldiers? Are they holding up or are they tired of this war? They are tired, of course. Like many men, you know, during seven years, it, it, it's longer than, than the Second World War. Yes, you see that. And it's terrible. Longer than the second, but with its complex network of dank, muddy trenches, this so-called line of contact, in some places just a few dozen yards from the enemy, looks more like the First World War. I mean, we've entered this warren of, of trenches that have been dug along the front line, I can tell you. I mean, it's, it's like being thrown back to the early 20th century and the, and the Great War. Because I've not seen anything like this in modern warfare. But this is modern, the reality of confrontation with Moscow and its proxies. Is there a chance that the Russians could be planning an invasion? Of course, of course, we know it. Uh, beginning from 2014, we know that it can be, it can be anyway, uh, each day, it yeah. can be. So they are ready, and but but we are also ready because we are on our on our land, on our territory. This is why Ukraine, the U.S., and the Western allies are so alarmed. Amid growing tensions, a dramatic build-up of Russian forces near the Ukrainian border and in Crimea. Cell phone footage has emerged of armoured columns like this one and of military hardware being transported by rail towards the border. Ukrainian military officials tell CNN they estimate more than 50,000 Russian troops are now massing. Moscow says it's just an exercise, not a threat. But back at the line of contact, there's already been a deadly upsurge in sniper fire. More than 20 soldiers killed, say Ukrainian officials, so far this year. And out here, even the president runs the gauntlet. We've got to run for it, right? Yes, run. OK. Run. All right, come on, let's go. So we're very close now, aren't we, to the separatists? That is all concerned. There we go. That was amazing. So we've come so close now to the front line between Ukrainian forces and the Russian-backed separatists that President Zelensky and I just had to run through the open ground to get to this cover because the situation is so volatile, so potentially dangerous here. You got a head, head, what's your head? What's your head? Elected mm -hmm. two years ago on a promise of ending this conflict, something he's failed to achieve. President Zelensky says he risks these hot spots, as he calls them, to show his frontline soldiers they have political support. But what Ukraine really needs, he says, is more assistance from Washington, more weapons, more money, and crucially, more backing to join NATO, the Western military alliance. Supportive words from President Biden, he says, are simply no longer enough. Ukraine need more than words. That is the second. The third one... Can I, I, can I just ask a follow-up yes, on yes, that? Yes. You, you understand, don't you, that if 
Ukraine were to be given NATO membership, yeah. that might make the conflict in this country even worse. It would infuriate Moscow. I can, I, 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 I can tell you, I can answer you. Maybe you are right, but what now is going on? What we do here, what our people do here, they fight. So what can be in the future? I don't know, but we, we have independent country and we decide where to be or where not to be. To be or not to be. You remember Shakespeare. That is, as they say, the question. Or rather, how much US support can the Ukrainian president now expect in the running drama being played out in this theater of war? Well, John, even the prospect of Ukraine moving a little bit closer to NATO membership is something the Russians have made clear they are fundamentally opposed to. Just a few days ago, the foreign ministry spokeswoman uh, saying that uh, the potential membership, even that, could have this irreversible consequences, she said, for Ukraine's state. If that's not a threat, John, then I don't know what is. Matthew, I have to say, Poppy and I are, are here watching this and our eyes are like popping out of our heads. I, I can't believe that you were running through trenches and on the front lines with the president of Ukraine uh, doing this running interview. It was remarkable to see that. Clearly, he wants the world to see what's going on now. That's what he gets out of it. What's Russia doing? Why is Russia doing this now, this buildup? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. Unfortunately, not with, a, not with a very definite answer because Russia doesn't make clear what it's doing. I mean, what it says officially is that these are military exercises. Um, it's not a threat to anyone. There's nothing to see here, basically. But um, we know from past experience that Russia often uses military adventures um, to distract from problems at home. And, you know, there are countless problems uh, domestically uh, in Russia. It could also be a message to Washington. Remember, there are particularly tense relations between Russia and the United States at the moment. Sanctions over hacking, over the treatment of Alexei Navalny, uh, the, uh, the, the opposition figure. It was only a couple of weeks ago that Joe Biden called Putin a killer, and he absolutely hated that. So this could be a, a Kremlin test, if you like, of the Biden administration's resolve to see how they're going to react. President John. Zelensky bringing you along seems to be a way to communicate with the world in the United States about what he wants, right? And Zelensky flat out said he wants NATO membership. What is the U.S. saying about this? And what besides that would Ukraine want from the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, they, they want NATO membership. Are they going to get it? I mean, it, probably not because of the reasons we've, we, we've discussed about it, angering Russia, potentially provoking Russia. But they want money as well. It takes money to prosecute a war like this, and Ukraine hasn't got much of it. They want weapons. One Ukraine official said, we want Patriot missile systems. We want to be seen as the eastern outpost uh, of democracy, the sort of front line in the sort of more general battle against the Russian threat. That's how they want to be perceived. Um, and that's what they're asking the United States and other allies uh, to, to treat them as. John. Matthew Chance, remarkable reporting, running on the front lines with Vladimir Zelensky. Thank you so much for that work to you and your crew. Well done.